Hi, I'm Mr. Miyagi and this is Mr. Miyagi's workshop. Well, today we're going to look at brakes. Now, you know when I built the seat for this bike, I thought I'd take it out for a ride. Well, I got down the corner down there and I thought the front brakes worked. Now, this is a bike that had sat for a while and I thought nothing about the front brakes, but I did adjust up the rear. And come to find out, front brakes didn't work. <laughs> Luckily, I had the rear. So I was like pumped, I thought, well, you know, what I think I need to do is pull this off and check it out. Now I tried, first off, I tried adding fluid and it was totally dry. And I added fluid and tried to suck it through the system. I have a vacuum pump and it wouldn't, it wouldn't do. I cleared out one of the little uh, bleeder valves thinking that that might be the problem. And I put new fluid and all that in there and tried pumping and pumping and pumping and nothing seemed to work. So finally, I pulled the unit off the bike. And let's go to the bench and I'll show you what I found. Okay, I got it disassembled. Now to, to disassemble this, in order to get this little plunger and everything out of there, you have to first pull this little keeper that holds the rubber sleeve in, which is not easy, but it's a little snap ring, and excuse me, which is not easy, and it's a little snap ring. So you have to get in there and pry it and pop it up and get it out of there. And this one's all crusty and everything else. And behind that little unit is a fiber washer or a piece of uh, plastic washer nylon washer so that comes out in order to get this off you have to pull two screws which pulls this plate off that holds it down now inside here is an o-ring that runs around the thing that seals the I guess you'd call it, uh, um, I don't know, which it holds the fluid. I don't remember what they call that, to tell you the truth. Anyway, that comes off and everything, make it kind of easier. And then you have, in order to get this plunger out, you have to pull this snap ring out of there, which is, can be difficult. You tend to have to push everything down. Now there's another washer that kind of holds all this together, but you can see how crusty it is. This is what allows the fluid to flow back and forth. And look at that. It is just crud. And so is the inside of that unit. I don't know if you can make it out, but that is pretty darn crusty. And then where the filler bowl is on this, underneath was just horrible so i'm going to clean this all up and what i'm going to use is hang on what i'm going to use some is some of this uh brake cleaner uh and spray this spray all over this and flush this all out to just to see how badly damaged it is if it's damaged at all and maybe we can make it work again now i don't have a repair kit for this um, so what I'm going to try and do is clean this up and reuse these parts. We'll see how well that works out. Also might mention on this too, you should be wearing safety glasses and some uh, rubber gloves for holding this and spraying there because this stuff is kind of toxic. So anyway, be aware of that. All right, I've gotten, you can see all the crap that I got out of that, that master cylinder. And the reservoir is pretty well cleaned out. That's what they call it, by the way. The reservoir looks pretty good. 
I'll take it over here and blow it out a little more with my air compressor. Now I did take this over to my wire wheel and clean that up itself. I look down inside. This looks pretty darn good. Um, I may take a little piece of towel here just to make sure. Forceps come in handy for doing this kind of stuff. Get it down inside there. Now I couldn't, I didn't see any, any scarring or anything down inside. It was just dirty. Um, the little rubber seals and stuff for the plunger and everything looked good. Both of them. Now these can get cracked and everything and you should replace them. Now I will probably buy a rebuild kit for this for later on. But I'm, what I'm, all I'm trying to do now is get some front brake on that bike and this is an easy way but uh, a lot of times the cylinders these master cylinders are, are so badly damaged that you you can't save them i'm sorry you just can't save them and you just have to buy a new unit so putting this back together again i've cleaned up the spring okay well let's assemble this thing here and when you're using dot three um, that's the problem. Yeah, it tends to want to absorb water, so uh, you really should flush your systems, you know, once a year. Or definitely, if you've sat over two years, you definitely want to flush the system. Because you may run into the same situation that I've got going on here with, with the unit uh, just corroded up. And that's from rust and dirt particles and everything else that gets into these uh, units. So you have to work that little plunger seal down in there. And don't get in a hurry, like I've always said. Just kind of work it down in there. Okay, so let's get this plunger in there. Now this is... the Kind of the tricky part, you've got to get all that together and that snap ring down in there. Now, I don't know about you, but I do not have a pair of snap ring pliers with long enough tongs to go down inside that unit. So, what I'm going to attempt to do, shove that down in there. And that's where these little grabbers work pretty good. These little pointed ones. Kind of push down on that and get it to go. And we just work that down into there until it clicks into where it needs to click into. Now you may have to push that plunger down a little bit. So I'm going to put this in the vise so it's a little easier to handle. So I'll move over there. So we're going to push that plunger down in there as far as we can. And then we play with that little snap ring. I have a thin screwdriver here that we can get it down in there. Let me double check to make sure that we're where we should be yeah when you get it down in there that uh, snap ring will fit down in there nice and snug when it gets into its actual place all right because the washers all the way down and the snap ring looks in place Kind of just move it a little bit to make sure that it's in there. Now, if you're trying to pull this unit out after you get that snap ring in, uh, one thing that I found is to block this area and come under with a screwdriver and pry it up. Because what will happen is that that one washer that goes in front of the snap ring will be so corroded that it'll want to hang up. And that's one of the little tricks that I use. Okay, so now we need to put this little catch ring in there. 
And what happens here is this all kind of goes together like this. This gets set down in there. Push that down. Now this is basically a compression ring. So all that does is just hold against that rubber seal there. So you just got to work that down in there. And then you have to get it over top that plunger because there's a little notch for it to sit in. And then this just pushes down. You got to work it down in there. And that just holds the base of that rubber seal in place just by compression alone. And just very carefully taking your time again and working that down in there. So that just holds everything in, in place down in there. Okay, so now let's put the bowl back on. The reservoir bowl. I'm just using a little bit of Vaseline. Help slide that down in place. If you just twist and pop it down in there, it will go. Once you get to a certain point, it just pops in. You want to line these holes up with the screw holes. You want to put the retaining plate back in. What that does is just hold that uh, reservoir bowl in place. And to get this apart, these part when you're first taking it apart, sometimes can be difficult. So if you can put it in a vise and kind of twist it and walk it up out of there, try not to pry too much around the edge on that because you don't want to damage this. Uh, it can crack this uh, bowl. Uh, one thing I want to show here, um, in order, if you're trying to pull this off without having to take this disconnect this wire right here the easiest way to do that find something that'll push in there and then this just walks out of there this has got a little catch right here so when it shoves in it pops into that hole there and it lines up there's a line up flat area right here that it lines up on so it just all shoves together okay let's put this back together and this clamp, remember, has an arrow for pointing up. So you want to put it on the proper way. We'll adjust this uh, master cylinder here after we make sure everything is working properly. You have these copper washers that go on there. And they go on. One goes in front and one goes in the rear. That down on there. Let me get my 12 millimeter. Okay, we're going to fill this with fluid. Now, you want to be careful here with dot three because it will damage your paint. It is kind of an corrosive uh, liquid. So be careful around your tank area. You might want to throw a protective rag or whatever up on there. So now we're going to pump this up a little bit just to see what we got going on here now we're going to bleed this front brake off and what i have is i have this little vacuum pump and a catch basin this came out of one of our seal meal uh, units where the sealing unit itself failed but the motor and everything was still good and i thought about it says well it's a vacuum it's sucking the vacuum out I wonder if I could use it for doing uh, motorcycles and cars and such. And guess what? It does work. Now that's an eight millimeter down here on this unit. So let me turn this on and we're gonna open up the bleed valve. Oh, there's a good sign. I'm getting bubbles up here in the master cylinder. See these little bubbles here? See them coming up? That means it's bleeding off the air from down below and in your hose and such. And also what this helps do with, with the pump going, it helps let the fluid slide by and go down and fill the line and the brake itself. So I'm going to shut the pump off for a second, but first I'm going to close off the bleed valve. So now I'm going to pump this up 
and then open up the bleed valve and you should if you have a little hose on there see some fluid flowing out of there which I'm not right at the moment so at this stage can't seem to get it to bleed off we may end up having to pull this off the brake itself take it apart because it could be full of dirt I'm watching a couple little bubbles come out of there and I'm not seeing much of the fluid leave the reservoir so it looks like we get to pull the brake unit and check it out well I tried bleeding off uh, the brake system and it didn't seem to work uh, the cleaning up the master cylinder fine but uh, the brake unit itself, the pucks, this wasn't moving in here. So I've got a feeling that it's all froze up. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this apart. Now what I did do is I used an air wrench to break these bolts loose on here. So what we're going to do now is we're going to break this apart and separate these two halves here. And I have to take out these two Allens right here on the top. Now, you want to be careful when you take these apart. There are some O-rings that you, you got to pay attention to. These little guys right here that feed against this. So these are the pucks that get hung up in there. And what we may end up having to do is let this sit a little bit I'm gonna spray some cleaner on there and hopefully that'll loosen up everything I'm gonna let it sit so I'm gonna use here I got some liquid wrench and uh, we will spray it around the outside of that and I'm gonna let it sit and then we'll come back and see if we can't get this to all loosen up okay now what I did is I let this sit for a while with that uh, liquid wrench to help do it up but I still couldn't blow any using air pressure to blow this puck out so what i ended up doing is i took a bolt and i had a round what they call a round nut but it's actually got an allen head on it and i tightened it up in there and then i got uh, some adjustable wrenches because i've always been able to use air just to shoot in there to blow them out but you know on occasion i guess this stuff does happen in there oh all right well since this is out i'll show you this has just got an allen head on it it's just i think this was off of 1100 v star uh, but um i just get it down in there and tighten it till it wedges it's not the best system and i'm sure that they make a tool for this but I don't have it. An expanding tool. But this is the quickest way that I came up with making something that looked like it might work. And it did on the other side here. You can see that. Uh, and I, you know, got it out. And the puck actually looks pretty good. It's just that it was all gummed up. And I don't know how long this bike really sat. The, guy, the gentleman I bought it off of, uh, he said he rode it, but I don't know if the front brakes ever worked on this thing. Now, I could have probably used heat on this, but I don't have the seal kit for this, so I'm going to clean everything up and just use what I got. So now I'm getting it to turn. And basically all I either did on the other one is turn it till it started really coming loose nice and easy. And it just basically walked itself out of there. Okay, I don't know if you've noticed what I've been doing. Is I've been trying to put up pressure by using the wrench, moving it across the vice jaws themselves to help walk that out as I'm spinning. There, it's up. Let's see if we can get... Now, very carefully what I'm doing is I'm working this seal out of there and it's just you know 
I don't have a seal kit, so what we're going to end up having to do is we're going to clean this all up because the pucks were stuck. And I'm going to try to keep everything that I took apart and put it back into the same unit. So it's the same thing. All I did is I just went in behind very carefully without trying to poke or crack. Just kind of work behind it and pull that up out of there. And then we'll clean this up really well. Okay, you can see that I've got it, these units pretty well cleaned up here. I've got the seals all cleaned up. Pucks look really good. You want to be careful though, if you're using a pair of pliers or, or vice grips or anything on that, that you don't damage this surface here, or it just kind of screws everything up. It will leak past there. Uh, I've got these seals cleaned up. It would be nice if I had new ones, but I don't. So we're going to put this all back together again. So I like to use a little bit of uh, lubricant on this. I've used uh, Vaseline before in the past, and it doesn't seem to bother it. So you want to get it really well coated in there before you put these things back together again. And also on the puck. Just put them on there. And the whole trick is getting it lined back up again. There. Good. Same thing on this one. You're just trying to get past that seal on there. And uh, then we'll go ahead and put the, the little seal in. Make sure it's good and clean. Surface area looks good. It's not the easiest thing to film this stuff. <laughs> I need to find a good location for the camera. So, and then I'm wondering the bleed, uh, the bleeder valve too. You really want to check this to make sure that that's good and clear. And what I've also done is I've gone through and blown out all the orifices in, on the on the cylinder itself. And we'll just double check this. We'll put this all back together here, and then we'll put it on the bike and then do the bleeding. One thing I like to do when uh, I get the brake pads back into place, I like to place a little piece of cardboard in between the pads just to hold them in place while I put them on the bike. It just makes it easier. Okay, here again, where what I ended up doing is I ran my little suction to pull fluid down in here and into the cylinder itself. Um, you can do it without a suction, but it takes a little bit more. You have to pump your lever quite a bit to get it down in there. But So what you'd want to do is pump up on your lever and hold it and then open up the valve till the lever goes flat against the handlebars and then close everything before releasing the lever. So what I'm talking about is that you're pumping this up until you feel pressure or you just keep pumping and you'll eventually get it up to a, a point where you need to hold it and then once you release your bleeder nut your your leather should come in and that knows that way when you start to feel good pressure like this one is here that means that the brake pads are working now on the cylinder so we were able to save this system without buying any parts, but doing a lot of thorough cleaning. And just because you buy a bike and they seem to work doesn't mean that they work. I thought these work, but, you know, the bike had been sitting for a long period of time. Well, now we've got everything back together again. Let's hope it stops. Oh, hey, look at that. Good solid brakes should stop this bike pretty good this is uh 
assortment of tools and products that you can use to uh, save your old uh, brake master cylinder and the brake cylinder itself. Uh, brake clean fluid, uh, you might need some uh, liquid wrench, and of course the DOT 3 for uh, this. A uh, good cleaning unit, maybe some um, little uh, prying tools. Uh, Phillips screwdriver, 14 millimeter. What I don't have in here too is a 17 millimeter if you have to take everything off. Uh, 12, a 10, and an 8 millimeter. And then some sort of way to suck down the fluid if necessary. This is a hand operated vacuum pump. Or you can do like I did. I, I built one out of an old uh, Sela meal with the vacuum. Works pretty good. Just don't cut up your wife's new one. <laughs> and you should have some sort of catch tube to catch the old uh, fluid. One thing you don't want to do is you don't want to reuse that old fluid that you catch. You want to depose, dispose of that safely and the proper way. Oh yeah, and if you might need to make up a little tool to get the pucks out. So we've gone through and rebuilt the master cylinder and the brake cylinder. Now we didn't use any new parts and I know that there's somebody going to be out there going like, well, why didn't you put new seals in? Well, I didn't have them and maybe somebody out there doesn't. Now you can rebuild these things and reuse the old seals if you're careful and if they're in good shape. If they're cracked or pitted or whatever, you're not going to be able to save it. You're going to have to buy new parts or a new cylinder or a new brake cylinder. It's just what happens. But you can see that you can do it. They work good after you clean them and everything. This pipe probably sat, I don't know, 10, 12 years. Who knows? I don't know for sure. I didn't, you know, I didn't even notice that the front brake didn't work on it when I bought it. All I did was put a new motor in and some new tires. So if there's any comments or questions, you can put them in the comment section below or send them to my email at tmiyagi at hotmail.com. Now, if you've liked this episode, please like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget that ringy dingy button for the next episode coming up. This is Mr. Miyagi saying be safe out there and hope to see you on the road. Ciao.